Hey guys, and welcome to Gwent, the Witcher card game. My name is Jagaris, and today I have a budget Northern Realms deck for you guys. And uh, if you enjoy this deck or this video, don't forget to hit that like button and maybe subscribe to the channel. So this deck is all about control. It's all about removal uh, and causing your opponent some trouble. It is a staple on the ladder, and honestly, I personally think it's a bit boring to play. All you do is just get rid of everything that your opponent plays, basically. That's that's more or less the gist of it, uh, with a lot of, you know, removal cards that you can you can kind of see here. Um, ideally, if you were running a non-budget version of this deck, you would be running uh, Blood Deep Baron and uh, Villain Trenmouth. Villain Trenmouth, after three turns, removes the two strongest units from the board, so you can use that to get, get rid of your opponent's cards. Uh, and Baron, you can play this card called a Lubberkin, um, which basically moves between your rows and buffs all of your units. So in order to gain strength, that's pretty nice. Uh, we don't have those cards, so we are kind of doing our own kind of budget version. Um, in terms of gold cards, we have Yennefer the Conjurer. She is literally the first purple card you should make. She is such a good card. It's a neutral. It goes in any deck. At the start of your turn, remove one strength from the strongest opposing non-gold units. So, you know, you're dealing damage. This is a control staple. Uh, we then have Igni. This is, in my opinion, the first legendary card that you should craft. Again, it's a neutral. It goes in every deck. Destroy the non strongest non-gold units on the opposite row if that row totals 20 or more strength. So, you know, really, really nice removal. Then we have Triss. Remove four strength from any unit, and she's eight strength. Um, and you can target things on your side, so if someone puts something on your side that you don't want to have to deal with, uh, like a cow carcass, you can use Triss to remove it. And then we have Siri. Siri you get for free at level 18, and she returns to your hand if you lose the round. So she's good uh, just to try and bait your opponent into playing cards and try and gain card control. I mean, I mean, if you don't have these cards, or, you know, if you have Villain Trendmouth or Baron by all means play them, you know, you can always run uh, good old Geralt in the deck. Good old Geralt. He's uh, he's pretty good. Shani is, you know, if you happen to have her, yeah, you resurrect a card and you turn it into a gold card. She's she's really good uh, with Baron because then you can resurrect the Lubberkin. If your opponent removes it, you just resurrect it again um, and continue to buff your rows. But um, without it, you know, she's not as useful. So those are maybe some, some gold options. Um, but honestly, like Yennefer, I do think is really worth trying to get uh, as is Igni. So, so those are kind of, you know, I run them in nearly all of my budget decks, for example. Uh, we also have Decoy. That's the only other legendary card in this deck. Decoy you get for free at level 20. Um, it's a it's a nice silver. And I mean, if you don't have Decoy, you know, prize-winning cow is, you know, it's always good in a deck. You start with it. Similarly, Commander's Horn is, is usually, you know, pretty useful. There's there's a lot of instances when it, it comes, it, it's pretty good. And Reinforcement in Northern Realms, you play all instances from your deck of a bronze unit on your side of the battlefield. So you could use this, for example, to get your blisters out. And ballistas remove three strength from an opposing non-gold unit, which is part of the kind of control strategy. So those are cards. All geared as well. Uh, fits in all the decks. So if you don't have the silvers that I have, that's fine. But um, CL, uh, uh, you get her for free. She removes four strength from a unit. So she's similar to Triss, removes four strength. Again, for control, good to deal damage. We have Naneki, resurrect a non-gold, non-permadeath unit. And she's really good for resurrecting or replaying Priscilla. Priscilla, you draw two non-gold cards. You play one and then you... Uh, put the other one back in your deck so then you can use her to play other cards and then you can decoy her to play other cards for example uh for strength we have tamarian foot soldiers you play one of these and it plays all three of them so that's 12 strength on the board it also thins your deck and helps you to find your control cards uh similarly reaver hunters after two turns it starts to play the ones out of your deck so this is also good for deck thinning uh reinforced trebuchets every three turns they remove two strength from a random opposing non-gold unit so again more damage ballistas you know we've got more damage We've got two Elza Slunders, remove seven strength from a non-gold unit. Uh, we have Epidemic, destroy the weakest non-gold units on the battlefield. So again, you can use this to try and get rid of your opponent's cards. Similarly, Scorch. Uh, and if you want to try and target gold cards, you know, we have Dimeritium Bomb and Dimeritium Shackles. Uh, and, you know, these are also good if your opponent plays Yennefer, for example, you can deal with it. Then we have our good friend Radovid, remove eight strength from any unit, and that includes gold units. So, you know, this is very clearly a control deck, and it's... Uh, so it kind of works against a lot of different deck archetypes, and it is definitely a ladder staple. Um, but without further ado, we'll jump into a game, and I'll show you guys how this all works. Sit at my table, and let's drink! Do not test my patience. 
Okay, so we are up against a King Brown. This is going to be a discard deck. Skelliger discard is very common on the ladder. In terms of the Mulligan here, you know, we're looking for maybe one Temerian Soldier, one Reaver Hunter, for example, and a nice selection of kind of golden and silver cards for removal. Uh, we'll actually Mulligan one of our trebuchets, just to try and find a Soldier. Oh my gosh, we have so many silver cards here. Like, so many. Um, we'll Mulligan one of the Alzheimer's Thunders as well. We've got D-Shackles. We've got D-Bomb, so we don't need D-Shackles as well. I normally try and hold on to one. And Decoy. So we've got one, two, three... We've got five of our six Silvers here. Uh, not having Temerian Foot Soldiers is a bit annoying because, you know, they're nice for uh, for clearing out the clearing out the round. Uh, War Longship, every time he discards a card, is going to deal damage to me. Um, we can just straight remove it with the Alzo's Thunder, though. Um, this is a control deck, so, you know, we, we do want to have control of the board. And well, doing that before we play our Reaver Hunter is is maybe a, uh, a smart choice. We'll get our trebuchet out on the board now to try and cause some trouble for our opponents. I mean, we could use Triss, but she only does four damage, so she's not going to quite kill the War Longship, unfortunately. Um, so that's that's kind of a shame. We could also use Priscilla here, actually. If we play Priscilla, hopefully, you know, we'll get some removal, which is nice. So let's try and find that. How about a game of Gwent? And, uh, oh, I really want to play the Temerian Foot Soldier, but, you know, removing this boat is going to be more useful. And we can always try and find the Temerian Foot Soldier again if we decoy the Priscilla, for example. Need? Oh my god, you really want this boat? I'm really surprised he's going so heavy on the first round. I don't honestly think that's the smartest play. Um, hmm. I mean, we could Radovid it, and then that would it just be it dealt with. But... I feel like we should hold Radovid for, you know, something that's maybe more problematic, potentially. No, I feel like he's so he's so keen to have this that we're just going to remove it. It does mean if he has Yennefer, I can't remove her. But I feel like this guy was... He spent so much resurrection on that boat that, you know, he really did want to get the damage. And here comes the discard, which we did expect to see. We haven't played our Reaver Hunter, so we haven't started to thin our deck. And we haven't had a Temerian Foot Soldier. So all in all, pretty, you know, frustrating. We can Scorch and kill the Morkfog, but when we move to the Graveyard, it just gets resurrected. I think we'll put our Reaver Hunter now. Um, and try and, you know, try and get those to those to play. I can do a great deal more. That's Coral, so I guess Fog is coming our way. This is a very uh that like dedicated, I guess. Uh like, first round Skelliger? Honestly, I feel like we just pass for now. You know, if he wants this first round this badly, we should just let him have it. We've got, you know, some options in hand. Oh, interesting. He played Donna and got a card, so then... Uh, that was nice. We did get our, our Reaver Hunter out the deck, though, which is good, so then there's fewer of them. Oh, well. It's kind of frustrating when they get to play a spy card and, and still win, but it's not the end of the world. Like, the person went really heavily on the deck. We didn't start with Temerian Foot Soldiers, which is, you know, quite frustrating. And unfortunately, all Geard and Morkvog get pulled out of the deck. That's just kind of how they work in the discard strategy. Uh, not a whole lot of stuff that we can do about that. Uh, I think we'll try and find Priscilla. We need to get some strength on the board, and, we and we're not seeing it at the moment. And mother and crone. Holy smokes. We could Scorch here, actually. If we Scorch, we get 12. I think we Scorch for 12. I think Scorching for 12 is, you know, it's, it's a, a decent use of Scorch. I think if you can get kind of 10 plus with a Scorch, it's it's done a good job. Um, and we can still Neneke the Priscilla, for example, bring her back um, and so see what we can get out of our deck. I guess our opponent doesn't necessarily intend to win this one based on the fact that they are playing. Uh, they are, they're giving us 14 points, for example. We could, we could um, decoy this and send it back to their side, but honestly, at this point, I don't want to do that. Like, I think having the strength is nice. Um, I mean, we could play Siri just to kind of stall out and see what our opponent does. Uh, I don't want a Neneki just, just this round, although if I could Neneki... Actually, you know what? We will. We'll Neneki and we'll get Priscilla. And then because we have Priscilla, we can then pick a card. If we pick this Foot Soldier, that then gets those out of our deck, which means we won't draw them on the next round. And I think that's a wise choice. We can always decoy the Priscilla should we need to. I imagine our opponent is going to pass. I don't know. I mean, he's played a lot of... The thing is, he's played a lot of Resurrect. Maybe not. Oh, well. That's not, not terrible. It's not not terrible. We've got three golds in hand as well. And we've got 20 points. 
I mean, we can always also decoy Naneki, and then is there anything that we want to resurrect? But I don't think there's anything we really need from here. Really. So let's decoy Priscilla. Because then on the next round, we're not going to have very many you options for decoy. I do it differently. Uh, let's have a look. What's the weakest unit on the board? Two. Okay, we don't want it. We want Ballista then. Um, and we'll just maybe take out the, the Priestess. I mean, we could hit Morkvog, but... We'll just hit Morkvog. Then if we do see Epidemic, we can maybe kill them both. And it's a little bit more value. But then, I you know, Priestess of Freya, it's good to kind of deal with because then um, your opponent... Then your opponent can't, like, reuse it in any way. But, you know, he's not really going to reuse it, so it doesn't matter. I know, sometimes I like to clear units just in case. I'm just like, oh, but what if? But what if, you guys... Uh, let's play... Hmm. I think he intends to pass this round. So we're just going to play Siri for now. Uh, we'll have a quick look what's in his graveyard that he might resurrect. Because we don't want to have to deal with that. Nothing too problematic. Really surprised he hasn't passed yet. Like, he doesn't really have a lot of strength on the board. I guess he's just trying to get cards out of me. That's why we're, we're kind of holding on to... Triss and Igni. Igni, you know, we haven't had a row that adds up to 20, so there's not been much we can do about that. Her who is virgin mother Having and both the D-bomb and the, uh, having both the D-bomb and the, uh, shackles is annoying, but it's not necessarily the end of the, the game. Unfortunately, you know, we can't really do an awful lot, uh, with our, with our Igni unless he plays more cards. Um, we'll just use the shackles there on the Aramon. That way, you know, if he does buff the back row or do anything to the back row and we choose to Igni, then it will also remove the, uh, it will also remove the Aramon. But really, we're just stalling here. We can't afford, afford to pass until our opponent, you know, has actually played everything, basically. Go on, take him. What do you need? Oh, you silly goose. Crack, I need me ghoulies. Looky here. So we can get rid of 18 strength now with our Igni. Which is over. nice. That means that the Igni was worth 22. I suggest that you pass. The only thing is, like, you know, the Morkvog comes back. But I, I feel like, you know, you must be running low on Resurrects at this the point, right? Provides. This is the thing. Like, you can't have that many Resurrects. Is this 10 points? This is our question. Is this 10 points? I don't know. You know, is it 10 points? Maybe? I think we call the bluff. Like, we need we need points for the next round, right? We can't afford to just play Triss and take a round. We need, we're just going to pass here. And, like, because D-Bomb isn't going to do anything for us. And if they have 10 points in one card, they have 10 points in one card. I'm going to say no. I feel like if they had it, they would have played it by now. You know, if that was the game, they would have played their 10 points. Oh, we made the right call, you guys. Because holding onto the D-bomb in case they play something super buffed, you know, it's just a nice option. We have 12 points in Triss, which is also good. The uh, Morgvog does come back. And the Ogyard comes back. And this is very frustrating. Oh, but we did get we did get Yennefer, which is a nice option to open. And start to remove some points. She would have been nicer last round because, you know, she would have done more. But she's also, remember, worth the two extra points because of our... Uh, She's worth the two extra points because of our, um, um, because of our uh, faction ability. Similarly, Triss is actually a 10. We'll hit Olgiard and put, put him down to a uh, 1. These two are going to both get hit, so it's okay. 20 points, 19 points. Okay, so I think we actually win here, right? Because we'll get another zap off with uh, Yennefer. Oh, is it going to be a tie? I think it's going to be a tie. We'll, we'll hit the Morkvog and the Shieldsmith. I guess we should have held off with our Triss and played the D-Bomb first. But, you know, I was holding on to the D-Bomb in case he had something super buffed. And it turns out it was a tie. I mean, both of these decks are really common on ladder, so I'm not really surprised by that. We'll jump into another game and I'll show you guys Radovid control some more. Crush those vermin! It is how I punish those who irritate me. Okay, so we've got a Northern Realms mirror. We're up against full test. Uh, in terms of the mulligan, I don't want D-bomb and D-shackles. I just don't feel like, you know, having both of them is, you know, that beneficial. Similarly, I do not need three Reaver Hunters. So let's get rid of a couple of those. And we saw Igni there, and uh, I think it was a Ballista. Maybe it was a Trebuchet. 
It would have been nice to have the Temerian Foot Soldier now to, you know, start to filter out our deck, but not happening. We'll get our Reinforced Trebuchet out, and we'll get our Reaver Hunter out, and then, you know, we'll kind of see how it goes. It really here, we're just trying to, to thin our deck. Um, this is the Lubberkin I was talking to you guys about earlier on. Lubberkin is super duper annoying, but fortunately for us, we have lots of options to deal with it. So we're going to play our seal, and we're just going to kill the Lubberkin, and that's that. Uh, in the graveyard. He might bring it back uh, with a um, some kind of resurrection strategy, for example. But it's it's just good to remove. Like, And this is why Radovid is nice, because anything that's particularly problematic, you can remove. I actually probably should have used a blister on it, rather than a... Uh, rather than the uh, no CL, because blisters do three damage, and she does four, but... Long live the king. Never mind. Oh, that row added up to 20, and I wanted to... I was going to Igni both of them. Uh, if we pass, we get another five points. I think. Or maybe we have to wait till it's our turn. We could Epidemic, and that will, will remove his Redanian Elite, which is actually quite nice, because if we can get rid of the Redanian Elite, then he can't get the three of them that then, you know, create a gold unit. So let's just do that for now. Oh, whoops, I forgot about Roach. I forgot about Roach. I was like, oh, the lowest strength unit is this one. It was not that one. Oh, okay, we can Igni the back row now. Honestly, I feel like when you're in a situation where you should Igni, you should Igni. Because the thing with Igni is like, it's really annoying if you hold on to it, thinking, oh, I'll wait for a better situation. I mean, that was what, two sixes? That was 12 plus the four and two. So that was 18 value. We got the round. We can pass. Um, we're in a we're just a generally nice position going into the next round. And then we can get um, Yennefer out, for example, and just kind of see how it goes. Priscilla as well. We can use Priscilla to try and get maybe a Temerian Foot Soldier. We've got Siri, so you know even if we don't necessarily intend to win this round, what we can do is is use Siri just to kind of force him to play extra cards. Unfortunately, you know he's on nine and we're on on seven, but like I say, if we get Siri back, it's quite nice. Yes, sir. I'm gonna try and find a Temerian Foot Soldier with Priscilla. There it is. Because you know we want to get those out of the deck for thinning. It means that on the next round we're we're likely to draw something nice. I have no interest uh, in Audrin, politics. he moves to random row on the same side at the start of turn and adds one strength to all other non-gold units on the row. Um, the thing is, we can we could re remove him with Radovid, but I feel like we should kind of hold off on that. We're going to play Siri and then we're going to kind of pass. At this point, you know, he has to win the round. We're on 27 points and he's on 10. So, you know, he's going to have a pretty hard time catching us up. Uh... I was about to pass, but you know what? We're going to kill Yennefer first. And that's why you hold off on the Radovid, because Yennefer, you know, he was going to start whittling away three points every round, and I want to force him to play lots of cards here. And the more, the more cards we can kind of force out of him here, the better. We'll now pass. I mean, these guys are on four, and you can see Yennefer's kind of getting her value out. I mean, they got buffed, but with the uh, with the Yennefer, it's it's going to keep kind of whittling them down. And he's finally he's finally gotten ahead for the round, and he'll probably pass. But now we're on you know even number of cards, and uh, he has to go first, which is nice. Our hand is not amazing, you know. We need to get Siri back though, so actually we have card advantage. We've got two uh, two ballista, a D bomb, and a decoy. But we can now Naneki the uh, Priscilla, which is really good because then we can also decoy the Priscilla, and that puts us in a in a really nice spot. We'll open with Siri. Siri is nice because you know he has to deal with Siri. I expect what he's going to look to do here, potentially, is get a lot of poor infantry and buff them, which he can do with stuff like full test. Uh, so let's grab our Thank Priscilla me. Thank out of the graveyard. Show him what She's back, happens. and we can get Deesh de Shackles or Trebuchet. We want Trebuchet, um, so we'll get that on the board as well, which is nice. We can then decoy, you know, the Priscilla and get another card out of our out of our deck, which we've also filtered by playing the Temerian Foot Soldiers and the Reaver Hunters. Um, so you're more likely to get something good. Which is which is why you include those for deck thinning. Tiny battles, hungry like a wolf, I am. Yeah, so I'm I'm totally expecting him to try and buff these guys. Um, what we'll start doing is we're just going to start killing, you know, his his infantry with the uh, with the ballista. 100. percent There's something like a lightning potion or a uh, commander's horn coming. But with D bomb in hand, you know, I'm not remotely worried. And you know, even if he even if he did have the D bomb, uh, sorry, even if if we didn't have the D bomb, we could then decoy the Priscilla. And well, see what we get with her, and then maybe try and find our D bomb. We'll get another ballista out. Uh, it doesn't really matter what we shoot. I mean, we may as well shoot the Redanian elite, right? Because we're gonna reset his his units here. And I kind of feel m mean because you know I didn't actually need to play Priscilla there and decoy her at all. I was just kind of stalling. 
Um, we'll reset his infantry down. And that is us winning the round. And you see there, like, for the entire game, you know, I was in control. I had complete control of everything that he played. He played Yennefer, I was like, nope. Uh, I had an answer for his uh, poor infantry. And that's kind of how Radovid control works, and that's how it's so annoying. And if you want to take this deck to the next level, then, you know, you're going to look to put that Shani and the villain Trenmurth uh, and the uh, Bloody Baron in for the for the uh, Lubberkin, because the Lubberkin would then have spent that entire time, you know, buffing my units. And then if they did kill it, you know, I could Shani resurrect it, or I could Naneki resurrect it. Like, there's lots of options. Um, and, you know, it's, it's a good deck, don't get me wrong, but it's just... I feel like it's a little bit boring for my personal tastes. Um, but let me know what you guys think of Radovid Control in the comments. Are you sick of playing against it on Ranked? Uh, I feel like it's a good deck, so I feel like I have to show you guys... But, I don't know. I don't know if I should have. But yeah, let me know what you think in the comments below. And if you've liked this video, hit that thumbs up button. You can always also subscribe to the channel for more Gwent and other card gaming options. Um, and if you want to catch me playing Gwent live, I have a Twitch, twitch.tv forward slash Jagoras. I'm on Twitter at Jagoras, and I also have a link to the Discord in, down below, along with a Gwent DB and Gwentify link for the decks. Um, and if you do like the decks, you can always uprate them or upvote them on there too. Thanks for watching. Have a fantastic day, and I'll hopefully catch you guys in the next one. Bye!